Welcome to this week's Gamers on Game. I have the great pleasure of interviewing Kathleen Kralovets, who is a uh, former Danum, uh, a former Danum student. We both yeah. graduated. Kathleen yeah. is a game artist or an artist yeah. in the game industry. She's also a 3D and 2D artist, as well as a user interface artist, which we might want to talk about a little bit. Animator, an author, uh, currently working on a beautiful um, uh, comic book type. Uh, sure, graphic novel. Graphic novel yeah. is the, the better way, more serious way of oh, saying it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Kathleen um, is here in Santa Cruz mm -hmm. and uh, has uh, has been here since she graduated in 2010. Yeah. And the day after she graduated, she graduated on Friday. Monday morning, she was working right away in the mm -hmm. game industry yeah. at a place that is no longer in existence. In existence, right. called Zabu. Mm -hmm. And at Zabu, you were the game artist. Mm -hmm. And you created characters, um, images, griffs, uh, what do you call those? Uh, the we did, like, there was raster images, we did lots of vector based games we did there were the, the, the games were largely like flash games done in flash and so my job was basically doing all the background art all the in-game art all the UI all of the logos and banners and promotional material and all of that and the different there's a lot of little pieces of art that goes into the game design. Mm -hmm. I know you were working on one that had to do with uh, tiles. It was a Yeah, there was a game with tiles. That was Picomino. Yeah. Which looked vaguely like the Chinese game. Uh, oh, yeah. It was um, like a little bit styled after ma Mahjong. Mahjong, right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And Zabu which happens, I guess, in a lot of uh, situations, got really mm -hmm. pretty successful and mm -hmm. then was uh, bought by yeah. another bigger company. Mm -hmm. There and was a merger, a merger, basically. It was an interesting um, situation where an East Coast company called Icarus and another East Coast company named NECA, which is a toy company, uh, all three merged together and created a new company called MFV. And what does MFV stand for? Do you know? You know, it doesn't uh, market face value. I market think that value. I think you know they're going to be doing games and also like more corporate apps. Right, 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 and right. And so yeah. So what's interesting, Kathleen, is that while you were in Danum, the Digital Arts and New Media Program, you weren't really studying games. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, you were in the theater group. Mm -hmm. uh, you did an, an amazing uh, video um, animation. Um, yeah, I was working on, my thesis project was um, a 20 minute animation done in Blender, which is a freeware 3D program. Right. And, um, and I, was, I was pursuing, you know, my own creative tangent on that project. And it's a project that I'll probably go back to as soon as, you know, it makes sense to and it's the right time and everything. But I was, I was even thinking that my career would be towards television. Because I was doing like lots of little animations for SCTV, which is a student television station on campus, and I was doing post production. I learned that video editing is not really my thing, which is good to learn. You know, it's good to learn what is not your thing and what you don't like. Yeah, That's and then get the money to hire the people that, yeah. that have the passion for that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, and not get yourself in a situation where you're being asked to do something you hate to do. And um, you know, just know not to follow that tangent to go towards what you really are about. So, okay, so you did go towards the game light. You yeah. did go in that direction. Yeah. Um, do you still want to be in that direction? Yeah. You know, um, I like the industry. It's really active. It seems to have like a lot of potential. A lot of creative people in it. It has. It's like pretty like awesome to see like how like lively the community is in San Francisco in, and just like how many people want to be in it not only just because you know it's a venue to explore things that are entertainment and fun and you know people are like you know I won't want to be a games programmer because it sounds like fun but also it's like it's like a creative outlet. So what, yeah. what would you say is your definition of game? Wow. I like to have a pretty broad definition. Um, 
because like like I was saying like on in my little spectrum it's like on the one side you have chess which is like two people obviously with their set of little objects that can do each particular things trying to do a thing which is to eliminate the other person's king and that's a very like set of rules there's very little luck involved I guess there might be a tiny modem of luck if you think of like somebody accidentally might not see something or maybe there's more luck involved when the players are not so skilled I don't know but well either white or black yeah yeah that's where the luck would begin because right. the person Flip who has the coin. first um, for two really skilled players right sure the person who starts the game right. is automatically uh, on the ahead. offense ah uh, right right so where were we we were thinking about my definition of what is a game on the one hand like yeah so like on the opposite uh, a spectrum of like a, a really like game with real rigid rules like chess which you know is inarguably a game i guess like you have something like i don't know the sims right where it's like there is a goal but the goal is largely to per continue playing or the goal is like you can kind of define it yourself in a game like that like so you do think sims is goal i kind of think so like i i feel like um like even though the goal is something that you define by yourself like i remember like the all these Maxis games were really important to me when I was like in high school and I would play this, you know, Sim City and Sim Earth and Sim Ant and all of these things that are really retro now. And then when I look on YouTube at some of that stuff, I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, just like, I wasn't even, th you know, but, um, uh, but like, it's true. Some people play Sim City or The Sims with like really a destructive bent, like, you know, um, some people like enjoy building up a city just to tear it down and like that's what the game the goal of the game is for them and that's like a viable goal although it does like these games like do kind of like put a, put a set of restrictions uh, onto what goals you can have you can only have so many different goals in mind when you're playing SimCity it's basically they build it up to some sort of like you know megalopolis or like try and have the most fountains or whatever it is or or like you know be a really destructive deity and um and tear it down um i think that that is still a game and you're you're going by rules because you, you have a limited amount of money and that's like it's a simulation of the real world and that you're operating you know to some degree uh, because, you know, you're working with these kind of modeled after real world things like buildings and streets and roads and cars, well, not cars, but like, you know, this kind of thing and you're, you have a limited amount of money and you have to wait for your money and there's like disasters that can happen which must be averted or avoided or prevented or, you know, stuff like that. So, Minimized. Yeah, 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 dealt with, right? Yeah, so um, to me those are games. They, um you know, they are separate from this world. I guess, like, my definition would go something like, yeah, something strongly to do with that, like, maybe that magic circle one, like, kind of chimes with me sort of thing. It's like, it's separate from this world. You have goals that, like, you can understand whether or not you define it yourself. Um, the consequences of what you do, whether you win or lose, is not really going to affect your real life. And, uh, and, uh, That's a big one. Yeah, it's yeah, a big part of it. yeah. It's, unless it's your ego, <laughs> it's the real world consequence of uh, winning or losing, right? <laughs> well, the, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you have that emotional attachment, you know, right. where you're, you're right. attached to the outcome. Right, like you do care. Like yeah, well, especially if you've just invested a lot of time. Sure. You know, yeah. trying to master the game or trying yeah. to create this megapolis. Right. And, um, that's kind of a funny thing, is it? We're attached to the winning, you know, to being the winner. Yeah. It's just funny. I don't know. Maybe that's just a basic fundamental thing. Maybe that's, yeah. So you were just telling me about the anarchist oh, definition yeah. of game. You know, uh, we, we, like, there was, uh, so Santa Cruz has a free school. SK. Oh, S-K-O-O-L, wow. free school. Free school Super Santa cool. Cruz is, yeah, it's one of the better free schools, I think, in the nation. I've, from what I've, like, seen and heard, like, I've, I've become sort of aware of, like, other free schools and cities around. It's kind of this, free school is a thing where people in the community can um, get together and like kind of, t every, a person can volunteer teach a class about anything, about how to, you know, weave a basket or how to grow a garden or how to, you know, 
knit or whatever and then they get to decide their own schedule and just like post it on this site and then people who are interested like just come and learn from this volunteer person and nobody changes money and so there was someone who taught a very interesting class um, which I took a few years back and it was about games and it was just about what is a game and we talked about games we talked about different games it was just like a roundtable discussion and the whole theory of what is a game which the sort of leader of the pack was kind of like thinking towards was that you know anything is a game all you have to do is call it a game and it's a game like like art yeah like anything can be an art because yeah and i guess like in terms of like yeah like art has rules art has a goal you can decide the goal for yourself but it still has presumably some goal and yeah and he was even saying that like you could think of like the the sun and moon is playing a game like the game the sun is playing a game called revolve around the Milky Way Center and combust one's internal, you know, uh, fusion. Um, I don't know all the, you know, like burn, <laughs> burn for a few burn billion those years. Electrons, yeah, really. <laughs> and the moon is playing a game called revolve around the Earth and get smashed by meteorites from time to time. <laughs> and then you were talking about the tide. What yeah, even game? tides. The tide is playing a game called crash against the shore or be like compelled by the moon or like. Oh, and what was the universal game? Oh yeah. And the universe is playing a game called expand <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and we don't know what the end goal is of the game we presume the universe may or may not <laughs> right and then so, humans are a part of that game right? yeah yeah oh yeah you could think of it in terms of like the universe playing a game called make people or make, whatever make <laughs> that's hilarious right so so does that one ring true to you i feel like that's an interesting one too like you like, I, I feel like, yeah, like, um, it might be to do with one's purpose in making a definition, which I think, like, if you think that it can be so open, a game, you know, you could think of it in terms of, like, a game is anything, you could. Uh, then I think, like, well, there's other people who, for their own purposes, might need a more s direct, uh, specific definition, and that might be where we get these really specific Right, because there's been uh, academic writing on game theory mm -hmm. for a hundred years now. And so in an academic setting where you have to argue and defend your idea, mm. um, th this has caused this evolution mm. of what is the definition of game mm -hmm. um, to, to be this a game is a rule-based system with a variable and quantifiable outcome, mm -hmm. yada, 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 yada. I feel like like a lot of people who like might not be involved in academia or like might not be, I don't know, either involved in academia or in the game industry might have a running definition of games and the, like this unspoken definition of games has something to do with fun. I feel like the common regular person, maybe, on the street might have a, a working definition of games as like something to do with entertainment, something which is fun, something which is due because it's fun and not because it has any other purpose. Which I think is why, like we were talking about Darfur, the game, Darfur is dying, and like um, how it, the game Darfur is dying is about, um, well it's a game that's meant to instruct people about the horrible state in which Darfur is by you play a game and then by your experience playing this game you realize how hard it is to live, the, you know, you die so easily in that game that you realize how, uh, how easy it is for people in the real situation to be, you know, um, put through that. Well the, the, ga the game Dying for Darfur comes out of this idea of ethical games where mm. playing the game actually helps save the world in some way. Right. And so you're learning about how it would be to survive in Darfur, mm -hmm. how hard it is, mm -hmm. uh, because you're trying to save your village. You're mm -hmm. trying to get water for your village, mm -hmm. you're trying to get fuel mm -hmm. and food. Mm -hmm. and so you win the game by saving people's lives mm. and okay. being educated by what it would be like to try to save a real right. village in right. real Darfur. Yeah, I, um, I like 
have tried to play that game like a few times and I always die really fast. So I haven't gotten to the part where you're able to save anybody, right. you know. Um, so yeah, well, that's my lesson. Yeah, my lesson from the game is that I would surely die really fast in that situation. Yeah. I think that's been my educational experience. <laughs> that's your uh, yeah. lesson learned. That's my le yeah. That's the lesson that it's taught me. It's right. like yeah, I would not do well, or <laughs> you know, um, right. But so. So that, that kind of brings us to one of the last things that I was hoping we could talk about, mm. which was a TED That was video. A, a TED video about... Jane McGonigal, yeah. who's talking about saving the world mm. using gameplay. Mm -hmm. And so at the time when she gave the talk, which was in 2010, mm -hmm. um, she talked about how there was about 7 billion hours of gameplay a week that was tabulated. Worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. That was tabulated by some scientific Right, stuff. right, right. And how she feels that if we can bump that time she to believes, yeah. 22 billion hours a week spent playing games, playing games that actually are solving real right. problems. So if we started looking at harnessing <laughs> that time and energy and effort mm -hmm. that is already going right. into playing games mm -hmm. and applying that to solving world issue games. Mm. If people would like pursue some really important problem like how to make it an electric car or you know how to make vehicles less you know more gas efficient or like you know how to i don't know cure cancer if people were pursuing that with the same vigor and like die hard you know perpetual you know uh uh concentration as they play dungeons and dragons with or wow or now Eve Online or, you know, a thousand other things I can think of, then we would have a lot of, right, like energy. Solutions. Right, right, To right. These, these massive problems that may lead to sure. extinction. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping happens. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like, like going back to like, yeah, what I was thinking about how like the usual person's idea of a game is something that's fun and entertainment and not serious and not to do with the real world. That can make it like, like a little bit difficult when you know for those who have an instructional game or who have a serious game or who have a game that's meant to be instructive and about something that does have real world consequences. Like sometimes the average person can like not understand that at first, and there might be a, a, a hurdle to cross with explaining that a game can be instructional or a game can be art. Or well, I think that's up to the game designers mm. and the game artists, such as yourself, mm -hmm. to uh, figure out a way to present mm -hmm. these questions yeah. that are in the gameplay, that are that mm. the kid is or the people are having yeah. such a blast and really want to, yeah. you know, find that cancer cell right in your body <laughs> as you're a little maybe yeah. protein. Sure. Um, with a hidden bomb in it, um, you know, <laughs> sure, sure, to sure. get that cancer cell. So if yeah. you could do that, um, you would be solving a serious problem. Right. But people are still having fun. Mm-hmm. Sure. So this is our challenge to uh, to you all out there, mm -hmm. is to help us make these uh, mm. serious games that are really fun mm. and help save the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Yeah. Kathleen, thank you so much thank for you. joining me on uh, this Gamers on Game. Have a great day. You too. <laughs>